Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'm very happy that you're here again with me looking at some features that the development version of Blender has just gotten. Um, as you may have noticed, I got a new microphone, so it should be much better now audio-wise. And the second thing I'd like to say is that I have to make a small addendum to my last sneak peek because Jonathan Williamson wrote me and said, hey, you didn't show the coolest feature while demoing the value input last time. And what can I say? He's absolutely right. So this part is definitely for you, Jonathan, and for all you that like to see what the value input is capable of. And therefore we have this small Suzanne model again here, and I'd like to enter a rotation value. And when I do so, then you may notice that there is the D at the end, and that means decimal, or uh, that means degree, sorry. And when you'd like to have this value in radians, then you would just enter R, and it would convert this value automatically to degrees. So you can um, enter different units for your rotation. And this is uh, possible with the normal rotate command too. So if you'd like to have uh, one, two, three uh, second rotations, then you see that it's a second and there is the 2.05 degree calculation for your entered second value. So that is really cool and I apologize, Jonathan, that I didn't show it last time, but now all is done. The next thing I'd like to show you when I just made an addendum to my last one is that the pinning has changed for the tabs. The pin was, I think, um, Alt and right button or Alt and left mouse button. And now we got Shift and left mouse. That is no big change, but more changes to tabs are coming soon, including design changes and so on. So stay tuned on that. And now I'd like to show you a little bit about, have to look at it, a little bit about volume scattering, right. So as you have seen in the last episode, we got volumetric support in cycles now. And you saw that I was calculating it with my GPU. And now you have, I have to admit that everything I show you now is with the CPU again, because the GPU broke in one of the last builds, not my GPU, not my graphics card, but the uh, support for the GPU. And as it, it, it wasn't supported uh, officially, um, it won't be fixed until the release of the 2.70 release. So that's no problem, but I just uh, wanted to show you that. Not that you're uh, downloading a build from Graphic All, switch it to GPU and nothing works. So now we got a new feature here for the volumetrics and that is volumetric scattering. And I prepared a simple scene for that to show you. And let me just show you the materials for that. It's very simple, just a volume scattering a node here, shading node and that is plugged into the volume shader uh, input. And when, when I got a light here, a spotlight with a fairly strong strength and um, a simple model that is blocking this light, then we got this effect. And as you can see, it's still very noisy. It's slow as hell. But um, I think that we are optimizing once every feature is in trunk. And so um, just keep watching this volumetric stuff in Blender. We will be faster soon. But as you can see here, we got a light source. We got those uh, volumetric stuff happening inside the cube. At the moment, there is no support for rendering um, your 
volumetric stuff when a camera is in the um, in the volumetric cube there so keep your camera outside the cube but once you you've fin finished rendering then you see that there is a really cool light cone here and that's looking already pretty awesome i think and i can already hear your questions can we render smoke with that is that possible and i have to say sorry not yet we will support it Presh is working on it but it's um, not targeted for 2.7, it's targeted for 2.71. So then we'll finally are able to render smoke with cycles. But what you could do is some really cool stuff that Thing2, Thomas Ding is showed in the uh, Twitter post he, he did about this uh, volume scattering. And that is, something like this a checker texture simple multiply node then a volume scattering up there volume absorption underneath combined with an edge shader and plugged into the volume and then you get such cool effects so that's really cool and i hope we see much more experiments and much more cool um, images with this feature soon The next thing I'd like to show you is some really cool stuff by developed and maintained by Howard. Howard is our Bevel guy and therefore I have to switch to my old scene back. It's this one and switch to the Bevelling scene. So all we got is a cube there and Howard developed a very cool new feature for the Beveling in edit mode. It will be on the modifier 2, available on the modifier 2, but uh, not yet. I think um, just before the release, Howard will be um, uh, able to put it in there too. But at the moment, it's like this you are pressing Ctrl B, and then you got all the stuff you had there before. But when you confirm and look at the bevel options, then you see a profile, a new profile uh, value field here. And with this profile field, you could define the profile that is dbeveling. And that is really, really helpful in so many cases. It's more roundish towards the one and it's more concave towards the zero and as you can see there are some small glitches there here and there but he's working on it and it's already really cool so thanks Howard for this and now we're coming to the last thing the last thing I'd like to show you is something you I'm sure you've seen several times before but maybe never noticed. This one is the splash screen, right? And there is a simple and very tiny thing called hash. That's a unique identifier for us to see what version you are using. And whenever you are reporting a bug via help and then report a bug, then there, is, there are some uh, fields here and one of those is exam is broken, the field broken. And there you, you can see there is an example here. It's, it was Blender 269. And this thing here is the hash. And that is very important to us because we are, um, we can um, see then what version you used. And if you know what version worked, then it would be really cool if you would fill out this field too. So just delete it, just delete that and fill it out and fill all those other things like operating system and graphics cards out, uh, out uh, give us a short description of the error and um, some steps to reproduce the error so we could investigate it. That would be really cool. So whenever you report a bug, please help us. That's your job. 
and we do ours but please help us with this with that that is really important for us so that is the thing i think we got all the topics covered i'd like to top to cover in this episode the next one will surely be something with um, the Laplacian deform modifier and motion tracking. There are some changes I'd like to show you. And um, oh, I think I forgot one thing, and that is some small but very important thing. We got a developer uh, working on cycles, on optimizing cycles at the moment, local. And he managed to um, give us a 20%, really 20% uh, speed boost on scenes that are using the Perlin noise in some of the materials. So um, he tested it with the BMW uh, um, test scene. And there he got, uh, I think, 25% boost. But overall, it's maybe 20%. So Whenever you ren you are rendering with cycles on the CPU, then you got this uh, this performance increase. The GPU is another topic. He's working on that too, but there are no results yet for the uh, actual version. He had some cool stuff for the uh, NVIDIA CUDA 5.5 version, but on the 5.0 that we are using at the moment, or that I'm using at the moment, um, there is no use. But just give him a little bit of time. So I'm, I'm done. I think um, the last thing I'd like to sh to say is thanks. Thanks for all the discussion that followed on the last ones, uh, all the input and all the opinions. That's really helpful for me and for all the for the our developers. It's um, really cool that some of you uh, already sent some mock-ups for the tabs, but as I repeatedly say, the um, important thing is when you like to get involved in our um, development and make proposals or something else, then just head to developer.blender.org because the YouTube channel and the YouTube comments and discussions are not very well suited for such discussions so just head over to to them and post your proposals there and i am really happy that you are so many good ideas and that there are so many cool guys out there and girls and that it's for now and i think um, i will release the next one in one week so stay tuned and happy planning <laughs>